Yo, today we're checking out the Hoem Mic Zero One. I figured this will be a great companion with my iPhone 15 Pro Max, as well as the Hoem iSteady M6 phone gimbal. Now with everything together, you pretty much have an unbeatable setup for stable video as well as good audio. And the version I have is the white version with the USB type C. They also have the lightning cable version. We are going with the Moroccan blade. You get instructions. Ooh, look at this guys. This is the DJI mic. And then this is the case for the Hoem Mic Zero One. The DJI mic is obviously much bigger, right? Even the mic itself is much bigger compared to the Hoem. This is the DJI mic version one. And then this is the Hoem Mic Zero One. You can tell that this is much skinnier. And this has a removable SD card, a micro SD card. This does not, but you can get the files pretty easily right out of the USB port. The case has LED indicators to let you know the charge. Once it starts flashing, it's telling you it is charging the individual transmitter. Once you open it up, you'll be able to see how much charge has left. You get two transmitter and one receiver. So the transmitter feels heavy in the hand. And on the back, of course, you have your alligator clip here and it comes with a magnet this is where the usb-c charging goes what is this slot for this is for you to insert your micro sd card this also means that yes for this price point you now have independent audio recording directly on each of the transmitter just in case there is some sort of signal drop don't worry you have a backup audio on the top you have a mic jack so you can plug in your lav mics on the side you have a dual action button that you use to turn on the transmitter as well as you can use this as a shutter trigger right next to it is a triple action button that changes the noise cancellation you can go into reverb mode as well as your linking button in case you need to repair it with your receiver this is what it sounds like on the reverb mode. Hello. Just to let you know, the mic is omnidirectional, meaning that it will pick up the sound as a sphere all around you. The receiver weighs next to nothing. It is super lightweight, and this is good news. You want something super light so that you can use this with a phone gimbal such as the Hoem iSteady M6. Once you plug it in immediately, you'll see these lights flashing, which means it's in pairing mode. It's just searching for the transmitter. And I'm gonna pull out transmitter number one, number two. And now you can see each of the channel one and channel two is now in solid color. Whenever I'm filming, I like to use the Blackmagic camera app. And there are a couple things that you need to do before this is going to work. First, you need to go under settings and then scroll down until you see audio and then audio source. Okay. And under audio source, you will see mic zero one. Select mic zero one, go back to your camera. And now it is recording on the Hoem mic zero one audio. So I'm gonna do a quick mic test now. Mic check one, two, one, two. This is the audio test on the Hoem mic zero one. Okay, let's see if we can do a remote trigger. Dual action button, the power button. Let's see if we'll turn on the recording. Start recording, perfect. Stop recording, done. It will also fit on the DJI Action 4. The USB-C will plug into it. Now, it does obscure your power button a little bit, so just keep that in mind, but it will fit. Let's see if it actually works. Okay, so yes, it does work with the DJI Osmo Action 4. So this could be a nice affordable wireless audio solution if you own the Action 4 and you don't want to fork out 300 and something dollars for the DJI mic set. All right, let's quickly walk through some of the key features on the transmitter. First off, single click on the red button you start and stop recording. If you are using this on your Talon and they want to mute themselves, double click on the red button here. The light will turn white and now this mic is muted. Double click to unmute. The next thing is we can adjust the noise cancellation. Currently you can see it is in blue, which means noise cancellation is off. Single click, now it's turning green. This is standard noise cancellation. Click one more time, you are now in 
strong noise cancellation. Keep in mind this is digital noise cancellation, which means it is suppressing certain frequencies to get your vocal, your voice to pop out better. To go into reverb mode, double click on the same button here. Now it is flashing purple and blue. This is now in reverb mode. Hello. As you can see, this transmitter is blinking and is not connected to the receiver at the moment, but you can still use this as an independent audio recorder as long as you have an SD card in here. So all you need to do is press the shutter button one time and this is now going to flash blue and white. This is now recording audio directly on here. So one thing to keep in mind is that the Hohen Mic Zero One's receiver is passively powered, meaning that it does not have its own power source. Now it can work with a bigger camera setup like this, it's not just for your cell phone. However, you will need to provide some sort of external power source like a USB-C power brick or something in order for this to work. Now, Hoem did say that it will work with their Hoem gimbal. This is the Hoem MT2 and if you guys watch my videos before i made a pretty awesome review going to alcatraz in order for this to work all you need to do is plug the receiver into the usb port and you will need a 3.5 mil audio cable and this is not provided you have to buy this separately and all you need to do is plug in the audio to the headphone monitoring and the other side of the cable you plug it into the mic input and I'm currently using the Nikon ZF camera here with the 24 to 200. So it will balance perfectly on here, no problem at all, on the Hoem iSteady M6. This is a pretty amazing vlogging combo, guys. All you need is a good camera, good stabilization, and good audio. All right, I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious about the performance of the Hoem Mic 1 compared to the DJI wireless mic. So let's put it to the test. All right, guys, you're now listening to Hoem Mic Zero One. How does it sound? We'll also be doing a wind test as well as a noise cancellation test, which is a function that comes with the mic itself. You're now listening to the DJI wireless mic. Today, we are comparing the Hoem Mic Zero One versus the DJI wireless mic. Which one sounds better? One cool thing I just discovered is that with the receiver plugged into the USB-C of my iPhone, by clicking the link button right here, you can start and stop recording, just like the Hoem Mic Zero One. That's pretty cool. So right now noise cancellation is off and I'm sure you can really hear all of the ambient sound happening right now. I'm simulating what I would be doing if I'm vlogging in public, i.e. in a train station in London. We're now in standard noise cancellation. The ambient noise is in the same level. Hopefully you're hearing me a little bit better. At least my vocal may sound a little bit more crisp. While some of the noise level, the noise floor is being suppressed. You're now listening to the Hoem Mic Zero One with noise cancellation turned on to the strongest. How is the audio sounding right now? Again, we're here to simulate that we're vlogging outside at a train station as an example, and it's gonna be noisy. I'm gonna be quiet so you can listen to the noise flow. Just for comparison, this is the audio from the DJI wireless mic. There's no built-in noise cancellation feature in the DJI wireless mic. All right guys, you're now listening to the audio from approximately 50 feet away. So this is about 50 feet currently. I'm facing the receiver all right, I am now at 100 feet with both transmitters facing the receiver. Hopefully you're still getting a decent signal strength. Now I'm facing away from the camera, heading towards the 200 feet mark. I suspect this is gonna be a lot of cutting in and out, but we are going to find out when we get back to the studio. We are now at 200 feet. Okay, this is a very, very far distance and I'm hoping you can hear me. 200 feet with both transmitters facing the camera. <laughs> now I'm gonna stretch it. This is a stretch go. I'm currently at 219 feet, according to iPhone's measuring tool. I'm at 219 feet. Hopefully you're hearing the audio. All right, let's talk about my audio range test. In the document 
it states that you are up to 65 feet for free movement versus 488 feet for line of sight. Now that 488 feet, I am not sure about. In my testing, I went up to 200 feet with minimal cutoff. And once I go past that around 219, my audio starts to cut in and out. So in real life scenario, I think 150 feet, you can expect consistent performance and anything over 200 feet, you should just rely on the internal recording as your backup, just in case there is cutoff. Right now you're listening to the whole M Mic Zero One without any noise cancellation. So now you're listening to the whole M Mic Zero One with the wind muff on and noise cancellation off. Okay, noise cancellation is now on standard. I am about less than a feet away from the fan on full blast. The wind muff is also on the transmitter. Just for kicks, we're going to test the noise cancellation set to strong with the wind muff on. Again, I'm less than a foot away from the fan and full blast. So what does it sound like right now? It's pretty noisy because it's right next to my ear. But hopefully it's picking up my voice decently well. Performance wise, I'm going to be honest, I prefer the audio from the DJI wireless mic. Is it a huge difference? No, but my voice just sound a little bit more crisp using the DJI wireless mic. And this is because the mic direction has a lot to do with how well the audio is being captured. So in this case, you can see the DJI wireless mic, the audio, the mic is on top. So it's capturing my voice pretty directly. Versus the Hoem Mic Zero One has a front facing omnidirectional mic. It still works very well, but it is not capturing my voice as directly as the DJI mic did. The second thing I wanna talk about is noise cancellation. While it is a nice to have feature, this is not something that I would be using. I can see if you're doing live streaming and you're in some pretty noisy condition and your main focus is to ensure your audience is hearing your voice and only your voice, then this is a useful feature. But if you're going to record and do any type of post-production, then I highly recommend you keeping the noise cancellation off because using software like DaVinci Resolve, you can easily fine tune the amount of noise cancellation in post. It's just that much more powerful and that much more flexible. Once the noise cancellation is baked into your audio, you can't go back. As you heard in the audio sample, having the wind muff will cut down the wind noise significantly. However, I would not bank on the noise cancellation by itself because it makes your voice very robotic, very tinny, and the noise floor is just fluctuates a lot and it's very inconsistent. Absolutely bring the wind muff along whenever you're shooting with this. All right, Hoem, what can you improve in the next iteration? The first thing that comes to mind would be usability and user friendliness. There are a lot of cool features tucked into a very small device, meaning that there are a lot of double presses, triple presses, long holds, and it gets very confusing very, very quickly. Honestly, I can tell you that I wouldn't know how to navigate through this whole thing without the instruction menu. The second thing is the direction of the omnidirectional mic. I prefer the mic to be facing up because naturally, if you clip this onto your lapel, your audio is usually coming from top down. So having this mic facing forward may not be capturing the best angle of the audio, at least from my perspective. Number three, I love the fact that it can record internally but I wish there are better indicators or flashing red light or, or something that allows me to know that the audio is being recorded successfully into the micro SD card. Now I know that if I'm not connected to a receiver, I just press a single time, this is gonna flash blue and white. This is great. Now I know what's happening, but blue and white is not exactly recording. I think flashing red is usually what recording means. So if you don't read the instruction menu, again, it's hard for me to understand what these indicators are. So yeah, I mean, those are some of the key nitpicking things that I wanna point out. The million dollar question is, should you be buying the Hoem Mic Zero One in 2024? If you're primarily shooting on your cell phone on top of a cell phone gimbal like the Hoem M6, then the Mic Zero One is a great choice for you. If you are a hybrid shooter, you shoot both big cameras like this, as well as on your cell phone, then you might want to consider getting the DJI wireless mic instead. All right, I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you do, hit subscribe. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers in 2024. It's a big task for me, but with your support, I think I can do it.